That young man then frees himself from the handcuffs, and one of the guards fears this, saying that they should tell the head jailer that prisoner 1001 has been freed. However, his companion says that they didn't need to warn him, as they would be able to put him back in the cell if they caught him together. Well, Doroka, looking at him, notices something strange about him, and the prisoner quickly finishes off the three guards and then starts walking towards the girl, who is scared of everything and begs him not to hurt her. However, he approaches her and apparently shoots the girl, then continues on his way. Well, on the intercom, a man warns the internment camp staff about the cell doors and the partitions of blocks one and six having been opened. And he explains that several prisoners are taking the opportunity to try to escape and so he orders the guards to begin reactive measures and tells them not to treat it as a simple exercise. Well, at the National Department, the director of the ASN, Yamato, asks one of his best guards to go to District 7 of the Mayhem internment camp to report the situation that was happening to them. And the director says that he is authorized to use weapons above Class 5 if he needs to, and the boy says that he will preserve the peace of the Empire with his supreme power. And the vice director, called Yuki, says that the ASN is the pillar of maintenance of public order. And therefore, he must take the defense of the peace built by His Majesty more seriously, to which the boy says he understood the message, and Yuki tells him to go quickly. He then leaves the room full of strength and confidence, and this makes her furious, because he acts very informally in front of the ASN director. But the director asks her to leave the boy alone. And well, Upon leaving the room, he reveals his work clothes, and then the boy is introduced to us as Ekout, an operator from the capital's security agency. And the vice director's brother explains that despite the boy's appearance, he is an executive on the same level as her in that empire. So the girl should let him work in his own way. And meanwhile at Mayhem's boarding school, the head jailer is startled to notice that even the cache of confiscated artifacts has been opened and one of the guards apologizes and explains that the escaped girl imitated his voice to get through the security authentication system. Voice. However, the boss remains involved, as his cell phone is an imperial and safe model, and says that this is impossible to do, and regrets that Daroka took precisely this device from him. This will put him in hot water with his superiors. However, he finds it strange that she managed to open that chamber because even though the girl managed to bypass the voice authentication, his level of authority does not allow him to open it. Because it contained a life prisoner with threat level SS, in this case, it would be Adonis, the witch's apprentice. And, well, Adonis is at the top of the building and activates his written style invocation magic, called Gain. And this spell increases the size of your projectile, the making it even more devastating. And after colliding with a building, the people around are terrified and don't understand anything. Then, Adonis says to himself that it's time to kill everyone. Well, Ekout calls his superiors and says that he searched for the fugitive throughout the internment camp and found no trace of him. However, he is warned about a bomb having hit a building at that exact moment, and they ask the boy to leave there immediately, so he finishes off the people causing the mess before leaving. In this case, the head jailer and his incompetent guards. Well, Doroka appears again and falls to her knees when she sees that whole scene and says that this is only happening because she did what she did and also because she was unable to stop Adonis from escaping. And down there, he walks through the city until the newspapers start reporting that incident with the building and the journalist says that the authorities believe it to be a terrorist attack carried out by neighboring nations. Well, Adonis begins to reflect on what he is about to do and feels that Chloe would never be proud of her actions, because for her, revenge is not the solution to anything, and it would not bring her back to life either. Furthermore, he imagines that in this situation she would tell him to enjoy life, instead of bringing chaos to her killers. And, well, a girl looks at Adonis with contempt, because she noticed him suddenly talking to himself. And he gets lost in his thoughts again, and remembers that the event that took Chloe's life is more than 10 years old, but he still says he won't forget it because her look, her voice, and her last words are still very visible in his mind. And when he remembers her saying that she loves him in her last words, he responds to that feeling, saying back that he loves her. And well, he summons a giant, and then people start calling for the police to help, and one of the men receives a call in District 6 from the Luden police station, where the person warns about the appearance of a giant in the city. However, the police officer believes that it is just a prank, but the citizen says no, and then the police officer asks for his citizen number. 
but the call is interrupted due to a car that invades the guardhouse, breaking everything. And when the police officer approaches the driver, he simply says that he saw a huge creature and reveals that he has never seen anything like that in his entire life. But the policeman imagines that the man must be drugged and decides to arrest him as a precaution. And then the police officer calls HQ and asks them to transfer him to the narcotics department. But he sees the monster with his own eyes. And upon realizing the seriousness of the case, he decides that the best option is to call ASN. Well, the monster continues to cause terror in the city, and he and Adonis head towards Emperor Goethe to carry out his revenge. And meanwhile, the ASN is informed that the enemy is a giant robot whose country of origin is unknown. And one of the guards explains that possibly the creature will soon pass through District 5, and he warns that local protective measures will not deal with the monster. And then the director asks if he informed Her Majesty, but the man explains that his report was blocked, and he says that according to the Queen, Her Majesty is not well. And upon hearing this, the director declares a state of emergency, and orders them to prioritize maintaining Defensive Line 4, and orders the guards to request aerial fire support from all available aircraft. The guard then asks about the surface troops, and the director orders them to send armored soldiers to fill this position, as the director plans a limited confrontation. And then he goes outside, and upon analyzing the giant creature, he imagines that it is not capable of moving so quickly. And, well, Yuki alerts his brother about the disappearance of the boy and the Redding Quill from the internment camp. And this makes her deduce that that creature must be powered by magic. And the director, upon hearing this, says that she simplified her work, and he asks about the magical photon suppression device, the dam. And the guard responds that it is stored underground, but he says he is not sure if the equipment would work perfectly, as it is a device from 10 years ago. And then the director hands that task into Yuki's hands, and says that this is a matter of national importance. Well, the citizens are alerted about the state of emergency, and are advised to quickly evacuate to a safe location. And in this case, Defensive Line 4 was prepared for the attack, and has orders to fire. But when they shoot, they notice that the projectiles are making involuntary curves, meaning that no shot hits the target. And then Adonis destroys another of the buildings with a punch from his robot, and the debris flies towards the enemy's tanks. And in this, we are told why Adonis is so brilliant. In this case, he would have spent his 10 years significantly, creating simulations in his mind. And thus, he conducted an entire scientific research, which consisted of discovering the most refined way to massacre a nation. And the origin of its magic is related to written invocation as anyone who is not a wizard can only use magic in this way, and this way consists of understanding and systematizing the mechanisms of magic. In the end, he converts them into mathematical expressions with the help of a special pen for writing, and Adonis only masters this practice so well because he has Chloe as his mentor. And to him, there is no difference between the people who were there today and the people who were there 10 years ago, and, well, Adonis says that killing Chloe was the purpose of everything humans did, and therefore, everyone who live in that country reaping the benefits of these achievements, they are to blame for Chloe's death, in his view. In this, he summons the Bell Bullet, which are two giant bazookas, and Adonis proceeds to shoot all the humans below him, saying that he will resolve things eye for eye. And then he cries, excited to finally have his long-awaited revenge, well, Ekout alerts the ASN about having found the sorcerer, and explains that Adonis is in the giant's hand. In this, the director confirms their real enemy, who in this case is a lifer, the witch's apprentice, Adonis. Well, the air guards confirm the target and begin the attack, but the humans complain, as they had exposed everything before everyone left the place, and a boy cries next to his mother, who was already dead, until a building collapses on his head, but the child is saved by Daroka, and she mourns the boy's loss. And well, they notice that the giant is gone, and they imagine that the army has already defeated him. Then Doroka notices that the creature has not yet been defeated and she asks a lady to escape with that boy, and says that she is determined to stop that giant on her own, and as for Adonis, he feels that he is out of shape. And meanwhile in the sanctuary of the imperial castle, Goethe was in bed, and notices that something strange is happening outside, but his wife says that he needs to rest, and reassures him saying that their empire will be fine. After all, he himself once guaranteed that his empire would be strong, and Goethe says he is happy to hear that, and reveals that he only achieved all that by having her on his side supporting him.
But when trying to get up, Gorta becomes unwell again and feels that he is in the last moments of his life due to an incurable illness. So she asks them to call Dr. Griffin immediately. And he goes back to bed and asks God if that would be a kind of curse or punishment. But even if it were, Gerda says he doesn't regret anything he did, because with his help, they built a hyper-scientific civilization. In addition to that, they got rid of the witches, and all this in the name of progress. Because for him, the world and humanity would never advance if witches were among them. After all, humanity needed to have its independence and walk its path on its own. And he says that magic would only hinder the new era of civilization. Therefore, Goethe says again that he did the right thing. Well, a rain starts, and his wife says that it will wash away all the years of his fatigue. And meanwhile, at ASN everyone is on edge, because their men have been destroyed, until they receive the news that a civilian is approaching the target. And Adonis grabs one of the guards by the neck, and the man regrets that they didn't kill him ten years ago along with the witch. And Adonis says that they should have done that, because that's what he wanted, and then he prepares a punch. However, Doroka appears and asks him to stop it, and he remembers seeing her in the internment camp, and the girl again begs him to stop, as she has already killed many citizens of that empire, and she wouldn't like to see more innocent people dying. But when he calls them innocent, he gets angry and ends up killing the guard, and Doroka questions why he did that, and he laughs at the fact that she called them innocent, and then starts to think about the idea of killing her too, because regardless of her being a prisoner like him, Doroka is still a human, therefore she is his enemy. But the girl tells him that Chloe doesn't would like to see that, and Adonis grabs her by the shirt, and tells her not to say her name, and questions her why she gets in his way. And well, he remembers that fateful day again, and says that if humans weren't treacherous and played fair, he and the wizards wouldn't have lost to them, and Adonis tells her to stay out of it, because he doesn't understand anything. And well, she says that Adonis was the name that the greatest witch in the world gave to her beloved student, and she claims that she knows this because she is also a witch, just like Chloe was. However, he grabs her by the neck, and says that this wouldn't be possible, as all the witches would have been killed by humans. But she says no, and explains that they survived the witch hunt. And then Adonis asks her why they didn't go to save Chloe, and she apologizes, and says that they were all desperate to escape, and Adonis says that she can apologize if she wants, as her mentor will not return. However, Doroka says that she will come back, and reveals that the witches will find a way to bring her back to life, and then he drops her on the ground, and says he doesn't believe that, and Doroka asks him to listen to her, as she would have infiltrated that country precisely to save it. In order to bring Chloe back too, as the witches will need his memories to do this, he raises his sword towards her, saying that he will kill anyone who mocks Chloe in front of him. Then Doroka says that he can kill her, because she is already happy just to have met him. And upon seeing the girl in that position, the memory of Chloe comes to his mind, and so he falls at her feet and asks her if, in fact, the witches will be able to bring Chloe back. And Doroka says, yes, and asks him to go with her. But when he was about to hold her hand, the girl is shot by Ekout who was disappointed that he couldn't hit them both at once. And this was another video. If you liked it and want more videos like this, subscribe, leave your like, and see you next time.